we're live. So this is a new uh, a new software, or not software, but I haven't done restream like this uh, before. So hopefully this is going to all the social channels, and um, you know, and and hopefully we're going to get some messages in here to see see how many how many people engage because I know that this Sean, this has really been uh, a, a lot of people have been buzzing about this. So as soon as I posted this on. Uh, my social channel, people have been private messaging me saying like, this is something I'm really interested in too. So I'm glad to have you here to talk about all things crypto. There's been a lot of buzz in the last couple of, uh, in the last 24 hours with the whole uh, Elon Musk thing. So, yeah, we'll have to get into that. We'll probably have to talk about that. For sure, yeah, it's it's interesting. So um, I guess if anybody wants to know, I mean, hopefully people know who I am because they're following on my channel. So um, tell tell anybody who's watching a little bit of, uh, you know, how did you get involved in, in cryptocurrency? Mm, I started looking at it about four years ago, uh, started investing about three years ago, uh, opened my own mine in an industrial location, started running about 30 servers. Um, hmm. Uh, I, I, I swing trade, I day trade. I'm involved in the uh, the blockchain technology. I, I'm, I'm a lover of blockchain. I'm a lover of Bitcoin. Uh, so just all self-taught. Yeah, all self-taught. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way you can really go to get a degree in Bitcoin right now. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same thing. And so I know that we are streaming live because yeah. I've got my friend Andy saying hello and my friend John Berenger is saying hello too. So the people are definitely tuned in, so that makes me happy. Thank you, uh, Amy and John, for letting us so you can see us. Um, and, you know, like, Shawnee, you and I have had this discussion before that I'm self-taught in social media and mm -hmm. um, an early adopter to basically digital technologies as well, which I, I think I told you before was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what made, what excites me is the same, I got that same, like, spidey sense tingling thing going on about this cryptocurrency stuff as I did when the internet, when I was first introduced to sort of the the World Wide Web back in, uh, I guess, 96 and the same thing with um, with social media back in 96. I sort of like, there's something about this. So I'm so glad to talk to you about this because you know, you sound to me like you know really know what you're talking about because I know nothing, nothing about this at all. So, um, so okay, so when we talked, uh, we, you and I just really were introduced last week. And so tell me a little bit of what, about where you like, what are the basics of cryptocurrency and, and why, why is this, why is this happening? So to understand cryptocurrencies, we have to kind of take a look at dollars or money. We call it fiat currency. Uh, back in the day, they used salt, gold, seashells. We, they use this to exchange value for goods and services. Uh, our dollar used to be backed by gold. Uh, in the USA, it's no longer backed by gold. They went up to gold standard in 1971. Uh, dollars are centralized. Uh, that means uh, one entity controls it, the banking system or the government. Uh, there's an unlimited supply of dollars. Uh, the governments and banks can print uh, as much as they want. This can cause inflation. Uh, the more money the government prints, the less buying power you have with your dollar. That's pretty much where Bitcoin started. That's the, the problem that that arose. Um, we've had digital forms of money for quite some time. We've had Visa, we've had MasterCard. Your banking card is a digital a digital currency, essentially. Um, we put a huge, a huge amount of trust in the government and the banking system to protect our money. Uh, the banks run their own private ledger. Uh, we cannot... Uh, we can always look at the ledger to see what transactions are going on. Uh, we can't uh, spot misuse of funds. We can't spot potential problems that happen in the banking system until it's too late. Uh, so Bitcoin essentially is a better mousetrap. <clears throat> it was invented in 2008 uh, by an unknown person or group of people. They called themselves uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, the Bitcoin blockchain is a public ledger. It records the Bitcoin transactions. I'm going to try to dumb this down as much as I can. So Yeah, well, because I, I, this is all new to me. I know nothing about money. I know nothing about capital markets, all this stuff. So, yes, keep it super simple because I'm, yeah. I'm. Bear I'm, with I'm, me. I'm going to try. <laughs> you think of a ledger in a bank. They just keep track of who owns what and where it's going. And that's essentially what blockchain is. It's a public ledger that anybody can view. Uh, to secure the blockchain, we have people going in and mining. Uh, uh, to uh, so the mining, the mining secures it? 
or if that's how you can earn some that's one way you can earn money right and at the same time uh so to mine half the supply of bitcoin took four years so the first four years we mined half the supply of bitcoin to mine the remainder of bitcoin will take another 120 years uh, it's an artificial process called bitcoin halving so right. every uh four years uh the payout gets less so it gets 50 percent less every 210,000 blocks uh it's a monetary uh policy uh based on artificial scarcity uh and the total number of bitcoins will be 21 million so, so that's, that's it so once 21 million hits and people have bought up 21 million bitcoins so where are we now so currently we're, we're we have about 18 million bitcoin in circulation we believe that we've lost two to three million <clears throat> due to people just losing their keys or just throwing them in the garbage when you know bitcoin wasn't worth anything well because it's not really it's the whole setup uh, sean is so confusing to me quite frankly and i know you've given me a couple of websites to sort of play with um but that whole setup of like the wallet and it was just it's just so prohibitive like i think that that's why some people are tuning in here is because like we want to know from like a lay person's standpoint of like if we're interested and we want to get involved how and, and i think i told you before last weekend or last friday when we were speaking is i set up something on coinbase because i was like i don't know how this works i just put in i put in a hundred dollars i'm just trying to open it up here i put in a hundred dollars um like i think it was like two maybe maybe three years ago i put in a hundred bucks and you know i told you it went down to like $25 at one point and now as of today that hundred dollars is worth over 500 in a little thing called yeah 500 and well when it, it was 515 this morning and it's gone to 505 so so uh you know the volatility uh, is another reason why people are like I don't know about this uh this cryptocurrency stuff too right which is a whole other story um well, so why, why do you think sorry I, I I should just direct my my comment <laughs> my question is why do you think this is the the currency of the future uh, well, currently there's millions of people around the world who don't have access to banking systems. Uh, you know, if they're living under a dictatorship, they might be scared that the government come, will come in and, and freeze their accounts or take their money. Uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin allows anybody in the world with a smartphone to own and control their own money. Uh, transaction fees are very low. Transferring money from country to country is, can be done in, you know, at the speed of light. Uh, you don't have to go through Western Union. You don't have to, um, as I said, everything's public. Uh, so it's, uh, I forget the terminology for it, but uh, it's pseudo anonymous. So uh, we can tell what's being sent and where it's being sent. We just don't know who's sending it. Mm -hmm. Which is where, I mean, now we're going down a little bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> where the whole dark web thing was happening with the Silk Road and because I've watched a few documentaries on this stuff. I'm I, again, I'm like the stuff is still so it's so beyond my comprehension. I still don't still don't really get it. But um, but you say this is really the way of the future. And that's what you were, we were talking about um, last Friday. And so far as like you think, you know, it's really going to become something. And, and this is this is why is this why it's grown so much in such a short period of time? And why why is all the buzz happening about cryptocurrency? Well, Bitcoin is the Internet of money, so it's going to be the world changing when it comes to the financial system. Um, there's a lot of naysayers to Bitcoin. They, they yeah. have they have their points. Uh, back a couple of years ago, they were making the point that Bitcoin was used for nefarious purposes and illegal activity. Uh, you know, uh, it was always pointed out that uh, most illegal activity is actually done with the US dollar, you know, fiat, not Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, Doing illegal activity with Bitcoin, you know, uh, might not be a good idea because it's tracked. You know, uh, we well, can... there's people that went to jail too once they did. Once they were able to pinpoint those people that were. The government actually loves Bitcoin for drug deals because it's very easy. Once they identify who owns the wallet, they can track where the money came from, where it went. Mm. Uh, for the nefarious purposes, uh, I think that's gone away. I don't think people talk about that anymore. I think they understand that Bitcoin is uh, an open ledger. And if you're going to do a legal activity on there, um, you probably want to go to a privacy coin or something, something that's not tracked. Mm -hmm. So people like myself, I mean, you said you got your parents involved in Bitcoin, uh, like well, not, not just Bit Bitcoin specifically, but cryptocurrency, right? So um, I'm curious to know why you think 
like this is going to continue to grow. I, again, I don't know enough about capital markets or anything to do with like all of that stuff to, to understand sort of the foundation of it. Um, but I, I, I am sort of curious to know um, like a little bit more about why you think this is just going to continue to evolve in the future. Um, well, that's a good point. Or, you know, there's another question that someone's asked and it's, it, unfortunately, I don't know whose name it is. It's coming from, from LinkedIn. So can you talk about some of the, um, the, the necessary personal IT security that is required to maintain a wallet? So that's, that's also something that, as I said before, I'm like, I'm su such a newbie in all this, like the cold storage or the VPN or the tour, or you, you, I'm just, the whole thing just kind of like. So when you take control of your own funds and you become your own bank, you become in charge of making sure your private keys are safe and stored in a place where you can access them. Uh, if you don't want that responsibility, you can you can store your uh, crypto on, uh, with a company that will take custody of your coin and act as your bank. So going through the Tor network and going through all this, it, it really, you don't need to do that. You just need to make sure that you have a strong password and you write down your keys and you keep them in a safe spot. Mm -hmm. People talk about the <clears throat> their 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 Bitcoin getting hacked and stolen. That's not because they're attacking the network. That means they've they've attacked your computer. They found your private keys. Writing your private keys down in plain sight or unencrypted is is suicide. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and somebody else also asked me about the um, basically the environmental impact. And you told me too that it's 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 doing a number on your hydro bill because you're mining. And I can't imagine that there are so many other people that are going to be mining like you are. I mean, you're. Well, we have that we have that Elon Musk comment on Twitter that really uh, really crashed the market a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking up some statistics, and uh, the world generates 160,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. So, if you understand how the electricity is created, if you don't use it, it just goes to waste. So, 50,000 terawatt hours is wasted. That's about 30 percent of the electricity we create is wasted. Uh, the Bitcoin miners use 127 terawatts. So it's, it's very small peanuts compared to what we're creating in the world. Uh, Bitcoin miners, their profitability is dictated uh, by the price they get their electricity. They're not going and paying 11 cents a kilowatt hour. They're going after the 30% the that's not being used. Bitcoin miners are going to the end of the earth to find cheap, clean power. And they're not... They're not sucking the oceans dry. They're not taking your power. They're 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 using the excess power. So in my mind, uh, this power wouldn't be used if Bitcoin miners didn't step in. So I see Bitcoin as green. What's the cost of securing our money? Securing you know two trillion dollars in in uh, in the Bitcoin market. It's it costs money to secure this. We use electric electricity to secure this money. Yeah. And so how would somebody want to get started? I see somebody else's comment on here. Um, they want they want to talk about other popular coins like um, I, I was the ETH. ETH is Ethereum, right? Is that right? And then and then is it pronounced Do Doja? It's Do 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 Dogecoin. Yeah, I thought it was Doge. And someone says, no, you have to pronounce it Doja. So how do people get started? As I said, I started with this this Coinbase um, wallet, and now I realize if I wanted to add some more, um, I wanted to add some more money into there. The payment method had all changed and everything like that. You've given me some other um, tools in order to to get started, and um, I'm just kind of, apparently we're getting feedback. Um, BitBuy is the one that I've already put. Um, I put a hundred bucks in there because that's like the minimum amount. And you've given me two different sites. You said um, BitBuy and BlockFi are the two websites that you had me um, sort of um, set up. So, like, how does one get started in that? So, once you register with BitBuy, it's it's very simple. So, you can do an e transfer to them. So, uh, they give you a username and password. You send the e transfer to uh, First Ledger Group. Uh, it's just an email address. You send you send a hundred dollars with the username and password, and that funds gets deposited into your Bitbuy account. And from there, you can just purchase Bitcoin. So now you you own the Bitcoin. Once you've done that, you can pull the Bitcoin out to your private wallet, or you can use a site. And for beginners, I I like using sites like BlockFi or Nexos because you will earn interest on your money. So right now, uh, BlockFi will give you five percent 
uh, interest on your Bitcoin just for leaving it in BlockFi. And they'll take custody of your Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You don't have to control your private keys. They take your ID. They take all your information. If you ever lose your, your password or your login, you can go to them and, and retrieve it. Mm, okay. So, and so... Uh, yeah, so it's the idea is so you just get set up, you put your your information in there. And I, I remember with one of them, I had to um, take a photograph of my license, only one of them. I, I think it was the BlockFi one. I had to put my license in there as well. And then do you just go in there and just, you know, buy when it goes low and sell when it goes high or like? Yeah, so it's part of know your customer laws. Uh, they want to know who's purchasing the Bitcoin. So once you purchase a Bitcoin, it's going into a wallet. Uh, if they were, if, if they were ever to track that Bitcoin, they would do uh, forensics on the blockchain and they would find out that Leslie purchased this Bitcoin It went into this wallet. It was then transferred over to BlockFi. So um, uh, what was your original question again? Um, yeah, so is it just, you just, you put your money in there and you just buy when it's low and sell when it's high? Is that sort of like the goal? And and like how, when when really should someone buy at what point? Um, I get asked this question a lot. Is it yeah. too late? And I don't believe it's too late. I, I believe we're, we're we're just in the beginning years of seeing what's going to happen. We have huge companies just buying in millions and billions of dollars at a time. Uh, there's less Bitcoin on the market right now than there ever has been. Uh, purchasing Bitcoin, usually you obviously do not want to buy at an all-time high. You want to wait for those 10% dips. And we call it uh, uh, cost averaging. Mm -hmm. So if you have $10,000 you want to put in, uh, you would probably do, you know, two or three hundred dollars a week. You you would you would purchase every week as the price dips. So cost averaging your way is the best way to get into a position. And ideally, you went to once you see something dip. Like I noticed, um, like in the past few days, it sort of dipped down because I think, well, whatever Elon Musk when he says something, and so I guess it was because he's no longer accepting Bitcoin payments. So then it, it dropped by ten percent and so forth. So Elon Musk, the company was very unique. Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of companies will come out and say, we're going to accept Bitcoin. But truly what they're doing is, is accepting Bitcoin and then converting it to cash. So it's it's kind of like a PR stunt. What Tesla did was they, they accepted Bitcoin, they ran their own nodes, and they're holding the Bitcoin. They're not changing it back to dollars. So what, when Tesla announced, they, 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 they announced some, um, some fear about the electricity. I don't think Tesla fully understands how the electricity is used and that the Bitcoin miners are basically using that 30% that nobody wants anyways. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's just, I mean, the, the volatility, I think that that's what some people are really concerned about is really the volatility of, of it because people still, like, they, like like we all know, like it's in its infancy. Nobody really knows what's happening. People that I know that are in sort of traditional financial institutions are saying, let's say, it's so you can't be, you can't be like swayed by this. This is ridiculous. But I mean, you made some really good points to me last week when you, you said like there are certain um, places that are accepting Bitcoin now, or not just Bitcoin, but like cryptocurrency as payment. I mean, we use, we use Bitcoin as like the sort of like the, it's kind of like saying band-aids as opposed to like adhesive bandages, but there's a bunch of different kinds of cryptocurrencies as well. So what's the, anyway, I'm kind of going all over the place, but what's the difference between like a Bitcoin and Ethereum or a, Doge, a Dogecoin? Like what are what's the difference between any so of them? Bitcoin is, it's kind of developed and morphed into a store of value. Its main competition would be gold. So gold has $8 trillion invested in it right now. Bitcoin itself has $1 trillion. So, you know, Bitcoin is a store of value where Ethereum is built on a uh, technical application. So it's out there doing smart contracts and doing uh, all the uh, all the innovation in the market. Bitcoin strictly is a store of value right now. Okay. So you can consider Bitcoin like gold. <clears throat> they all do different things then, is that right? They, like they all do different things? Well, Dogecoin, Dogecoin is an interesting case because Dogecoin was made as a joke. Right. Uh, it really doesn't have a purpose. Investing in Dogecoin is strictly speculation. Uh, I don't see do a long life for Dogecoin. You see Dogecoin kind of pumping up and then trailing off and pumping up and trailing off as it gets popular and unpopular. I don't see Dogecoin being around because it just doesn't serve any purpose. It, it, they don't have smart contracts. They don't have NFTs. They don't. There's no innovation going on in that in that on that coin. Mm -hmm. And there's an unlimited supply of it. 
Right. So, so what people should be looking for is is something that has a limited supply. Uh, yes. Uh, something. So, investing in Bitcoin. I don't think you can ever go wrong with investing in Bitcoin. Most people are investing in all coins to try to build their Bitcoin collection to try to earn more Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So, if you're if you're scared of the volatility and you're, you're looking to strictly invest and hold for five years, Bitcoin is is always a safe bet. Mm -hmm. If you're investing in Cardano or you're investing in Ethereum or you're investing in some of these other coins, uh, you know, who knows where they're going to be in a couple of years. Yeah, and there's so many different ones that are coming up all the time. I, I saw that um, Facebook's uh, Mark Zuckerberg, had mm -hmm. he was creating, and I think they changed the name of it, um, but he's in the process of creating some kind of coin as well. Isn't that right? Yeah, he's creating a stable coin. Um, right. If, if Facebook is allowed to create a stable coin, they will become the biggest bank in the world. It's, it's pretty scary. Well, it is pretty scary already for knowing knowing what Facebook is already tracking about us already. Yeah. So okay. So go back. Going back to because again, I'm just trying to just trying to get my head wrapped around this. So I set up account with BlockFi. Mm -hmm. I put in a hundred dollars, and then you're saying like always, you know, just continue to buy every time it sort of dips a little bit. Or you were even saying to me like every paycheck, put in a little ten percent. For that dollar I, would never, I would never advocate for anybody uh, going all in and blowing all their savings on Bitcoin. Right. I advocate for um, small amounts and purchasing at a steady rate over time. When we go through the bull market, the prices are going to go uh, insane. We're in a bull market right now. We've seen prices, you know, go from thirteen thousand to sixty-five thousand. So if you're buying at sixty-five thousand, you want to be careful. You don't, you know, if you have ten thousand to put in, you want to cost average your way in slowly and if you if you had cost average your way in for the last few years, your average buying price would be you know eight nine thousand dollars, right? If you had just put in you know five or ten percent of your paycheck, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 I would never advocate for anybody to go all in immediately. You want to purchase little bits slowly over time. A lot of people ask me how much Bitcoin they should hold, uh, you know what what they should be holding on to. What's a what's a good amount to hold? And my answer is always ten percent of a Bitcoin. If you're if you're willing to hold 10% of a Bitcoin for the next five years, uh, you're going to do very well. Yeah, because there are a lot of um, predictions that this is the year. This is the year that we're going to see a lot of growth. Um, so, uh, and I think that's kind of implied as well, right? My predictions for Bitcoin <clears throat> is I'm fairly confident we'll break $100,000. Um, so $130,000 is kind of my, um, uh, I think that's where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a good chance we could push to two hundred and eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If you look at the past bull markets, we tend to end the bull market with a blow off top. So I would expect to see something like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then within two days, just you know, two hundred and eighty, and then right back down. Okay. Yeah, because I seem to see I see this like it's going up and then it goes down. And then it goes, like I mean, it is it is really volatile compared to obviously. I mean, I'm I, as I said, I'm not sort of dabbling in stocks or anything like that, but um, I think that's the, the the fear that people see. But you're saying like put it in and hold it, just you know, just, just a sort of like a little bit of an insurance. Yeah. If you're looking to make a quick dollar, this is probably not the market for you. You want to be able to start putting in money slowly and to hold for at least three to five years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where you're going to make your money. Right. And and right now the government isn't going to like can can they tax it? Um, I to tell you the truth, I haven't pulled any out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't figured out what the taxes are going to be. I know, I know it's an evolving system and it's changing. Right. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the what the tax uh, implications are going to be when when it's time to pull out. But uh, uh, I, I'm assuming it's going to change a lot in the next five years. So I, I wouldn't be worried about the tax implications immediately because you know you're not going to be pulling out for a couple of years. Right. So you're saying put. So if anybody's interested in put in a little bit something anything that you're willing to lose. And, and then just hold it and kind of like you would with any kind of like in, in Canada, we have like RSPs or in the States, I guess it's a 401k or something like that. It's kind of the same idea, right? That you would put this in for, you know, yeah, from a long term standpoint. A lot of people are scared of the volatility. Uh, to me, volatility is life. The market's moving, you know, it moves up, it moves down. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, it's lost 80% of its value three times in the history of Bitcoin. You know, more than likely that's going to happen again. 
Mm. So, you know, you, you buy all the way down, you buy all the way up and you cost average your way in. And at the end of the day, you're, you're in the middle somewhere. Okay. And I don't know if this is a question you can answer and I don't even know if it's a question I need to know about, but they're just the, like anything else, like the intangibility. It's like well, this. So some person that we don't even know who it is come, come, came up with this idea of Bitcoin and now it's, um, you know, it's worth how, how much do you say it's kind of worth, or do you know? Uh, today, I believe it's 50, 51,000, I believe it is today. So 51,000 per one Bitcoin. One Bitcoin, and that's US, USD. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's where I think everyone's sort of like, I don't understand how this works. Like, it's not as if there's like one specific, but then the same thing, like money is, you know, the, 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 the tangibility of money. And well, what like, people don't understand is that you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy, you know, 1% of the Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of the Bitcoin. You can right. buy $10 worth of Bitcoin. So a lot of people think that you have to jump in and, and immediately spend, you know, fifty, sixty thousand $60,000. You don't. You can, you can buy $10 a day. You can buy, you know, whatever your coffee costs. You can just put it in. Yeah. Well, that's what I, that's what I mean. Like, as I said, so I bought it, um, you know, just kind of goofing around. I put in a hundred dollars and then, you know, I was telling all the, Oh, look at, I'm look how fancy I am. I went into here and I put in a hundred dollars and it's already it like $200 within like a few weeks. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then it dropped down to $20 when I was like, well, okay. So maybe the, maybe the bubble is going to burst because as we know, you know, that that can happen as well. Things that we think are going to be the future of sometimes so, can happen. I, I hear that a lot. I hear, I hear the bubble is going to burst. Uh, right. The internet was a bubble. It burst. You know, yeah. And look at us now. Look yeah. at us. You know, it changed the way we do business. It changed the way we interact with people. It, it changed our whole lives. So, if cryptocurrency is a bubble, it might pop. Right. But that doesn't mean it's going to die. It doesn't mean it's going to go away. So, like the like the dot bombs or the dot. So, I remember working in a dot com and the dot like in the year two thousand. I worked at a dot com that didn't survive. It, a lot of venture capital was thrown at it. It was not one of the ones that. That survived through that time, um, but again, look at the internet now. So um, when you're investing in Bitcoin, you're not investing in a dot com startup. You're investing in the internet itself. Okay. So you're you're investing in the true technology behind what runs the internet. So if someone someone told you 20 years ago that you could invest, you know, in the internet or in hydro, in electrical, you you're investing in a service that lays the foundation. Right, okay, okay, if I can get my head wrapped around that. So uh, my friend John Berenger says that he, um, or I think, oh, I thought it was John, but maybe it's somebody else. Somebody else said their tax accountant was required to answer if they had any earnings from either mining or trading crypto. So I guess the disclosure must be there now. If you're making money, you have to dis dis you know, disclose yeah, it. To the government because they, want, they want their piece. I, I like the fact that the government's taxing us on it because it legitimizes it. You know, if they're making money, they're not going to outright ban it or, or you know, go against it too hard. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one of the things that you were telling me about in our conversation, too, was like that that China is really spending a lot of effort and time and money into, yeah. into this, these cryptocurrencies. Right. Are they the leaders right now in cryptocurrencies? They have, they have the majority of the hash power. I, I see a day when, uh, you know, as cryptocurrency grows that the U.S. and Canada will want to make sure that the hash and power is on Canadian and U.S. soil. Mm. You know, we, we, we started talking about, um, you know, green energy and, uh, you know, the way the miners, the miners are going after green energy. So start doing startups in Canada where the, the hash power is on Canadian soil using, you know, hydroelectric or using solar or wind. Uh, I think those days are coming. And so when you mean by hash power, you mean like that's where you so basically if I can if I can figure this out, which tell me if I'm wrong, um, hash power is kind of like is is like the electricity that helps you um, mine the coins. Is that right? So it's like um, like it would be like if, if you needed to turn the lights on in your house to see things, hash power is really what um, is the energy for mining the bitcoins. Is that right? Uh, okay, so uh, when we mine, uh, the computer is working to solve um, to solve a problem. The quicker it can solve the problem, the more hash power it has. So it's the more computer computer compute power. Uh, the the quicker they can solve that mathematical equation. So the first one. So if you have a ledger, you're trying to 
how do I explain this? You're trying to, you need somebody. So I'm transferring Bitcoin from you, from me to you. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to confirm that transaction and enter it into the blockchain onto a ledger. How do we do that? We need somebody we trust, but what we need is somebody who has a stake in the game and somebody who, who it's done completely at random. So mm -hmm. to find that random person, the miners come on and they try to solve an equation. The first miner to solve that equation is allowed to enter uh, enter that information onto the ledger or onto the blockchain. Uh, I hope I explained that right. Um, it still goes. It's still. It's it's very complicated in my brain. I don't. It it doesn't necessarily make. I just want to make some money. That's all. <laughs> that's all I'm interested in. Shot. I'm like. I just want to make some money, honey. Um. And so I guess maybe all of that mining stuff. It most people aren't going to be miners, right? I know. You know. You had a, a brief conversation with my kid, and you think like this is a really good place for kids to actually not not necessarily good place for kids, but my son has a has an interest in sort of finance, finances, money, and computers, and, and, and. And you're saying, like, it's possible that if he has the right equipment, which he sort of doesn't have the right equipment, um, that, you know, his computer could be making, like, very tiny amounts of Bitcoin by mining it. So if you're, if you're mining Bitcoin, you can't mine Bitcoin on a computer. You need a very specific type of machine. Oh, it's I see. Okay. An ASIC machine. Okay. Um, but what you can mine on your computer is you can mine currently, you can mine Ethereum, you can mine Ravencoin. These coins are, are mined using your uh, video card, your processor on your video card. Which is why we can't buy one right now. My son's been trying to buy a graphics card for over a year and he can't seem to get one is because the miners are, are buying them up. Is that right? And it's not just the miners. It's, it's, it's people who want to mine. It's not some industrial company going around buying up uh, video cards it, it is that as well but it's also uh the population you know they want to if they can spend a few thousand dollars on a video card and they can make that money back within six months it's, it's a no-brainer for them right 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 yeah but most of us aren't going to be doing that because i mean you're like you have these superpowers uh, you know everything there is to do about you know the hardware side of things and um and most of us are just going to be complete Sorry, most, of, most, most of you will be purchasing Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin for a long time. You right. won't care uh, too much about who's mining or what they're mining. Or, this is all background stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, because I couldn't get into the technology of that stuff. Like you you and my son were able to sort of like talk about different things. I was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I, and I would assume that most people are not going to have any idea how to do any of that background stuff. Um, David Blackmore is asking, what's your take on Do uh, Dogecoin and smaller coins that are getting a lot of news right now? Well, there's been uh, uh, Dogecoin has been pumped by Elon Musk. Uh, it's it's kind of gone parabolic. It's a really trendy coin. It's um, it seems to have the ears of everybody. Uh, it's it's lost about thirty percent of its value in the last couple of days. Uh, to me, Dogecoin is a, it's a scary coin. It's uh, uh, holding that long term would be uh, absolute suicide. Mm. Uh, we're seeing all these. Uh, back in the day, when we had these um, these coins that really served no purpose, uh, the creators of these coins would come out and promise, you know, all this stuff and just never deliver. Uh -huh. Now we're starting to see coins come out where they're not even promising anything. So that Shibu Inu coin that just came out and it went up, you know, five thousand percent in a day. You know, we're, we're seeing you got to be really careful. Uh -huh. So. Uh, investing in coins that have value, investing in coins that have been around and that have proven themselves. You know, some of my favorite coins are, um, you know, Litecoin, you know, Cordano, uh, you know, um, uh, Chainlink, Filecoin. Uh, you know, these are good projects that have a, you know, a purpose. Dogecoin doesn't. It, it really, you're investing in, you know, when people say that uh, Bitcoin's not backed by anything and it's, Dogecoin really is that. Dogecoin really is just, it's just moving up because it's popular. Mm. When the bear market hits, uh, somebody's going to be left holding the bag with Dogecoin. Kind of like a pyramid scheme in a way? Uh, kind of like Beanie Babies, maybe. <laughs> kind of like Beanie Babies. Yeah, the, the popularization of that and then now they're not worth anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, jumping onto an exchange and buying a... Uh, a lot of new investors, the one thing they tell me is I'm going to go on the exchange and buy, you know, five dollars of every coin. And then I try to explain to them that there's four thousand coins out there. Mm. Doing that would not work. It will not make you money. You'll lose more than you make a hundredfold. So uh, 
you have to do your research when purchasing coin. To me, the safe thought is you're you're buying coin to up the amount of Bitcoin you have. So in the end, you really want to buy Bitcoin. You really want to cost average your way in. And once you learn the technology and learn the market, you're going to find projects that really resonate with you. And when you find those projects, go ahead and invest a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. But investing in, in a bull market is fine. But when the bear market hits, a lot of these altcoins lose 99% of their value. So mm-hmm. Bitcoin might lose 80% of its value, but these altcoins lose 99% of their value. So as soon as the the, uh, the bear market comes, you want to be out of all altcoins. You want to be sitting in Bitcoin or you want to be sitting in a coin that's pegged to the U.S. dollar like Tether. So Tether is a coin that is uh, pegged to the U.S. dollar. So it's worth $1 today. It'll be worth $1 in five years. Hmm. So if the bear market is coming to, if the bull market is coming to an end, you might want to jump into Tether and wait for that, you know, Bitcoin to retrace and then purchase your position back. So do do these cryptocurrencies, do they fall, usually follow the same trend as like the US dollar or like however the stock market is working? Do they typically follow the same yeah, If the stock market is doing low, the, they'll, they'll usually take a hit. Uh, sometimes they'll deviate a little bit from it. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, a lot of the altcoins will follow Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin starts moving up, they also will follow behind. So when you're purchasing an altcoin, you really want your altcoin to do better than Bitcoin. You want your altcoin, you know, if Bitcoin goes up 5%, you want your altcoin to be up 10%, you know, so you can convert back to Bitcoin. Because that's what I was told. It was, again, it was a few years ago. And so the connection of mine told me to put more in Ethereum and than Bitcoin. So I was just like, okay, I don't, I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, you're well, helping Ethereum, me. Ethereum. I'm away at it a little bit, but I'm st- I still don't get most of it. <laughs> Ethereum's done quite well. Ethereum is is done about two or three x better than Bitcoin this this bull cycle so far, but this bull cycle is not over. I think we're only about halfway through this bull cycle, so I think Bitcoin's got a long way to go. So once you miss the rush on Ethereum, uh, I don't think it's a good idea to put your money in Ethereum right now. Ethereum's at four thousand uh, dollars. We hear estimates that it might hit ten thousand dollars by the end of the bull run. Uh, it's a good investment. It's just we've already we've already missed the rush. We've already missed the uh, you know going from fifteen hundred dollars to four thousand. So you would be buying the top right now. Whereas Bitcoin, uh, I still I still think we're going to breach a hundred thousand uh, dollars. So you know Bitcoin's always a safe bet. So are you saying I should move my Ethereum out and put it into Bitcoin? Is that your? If you're already in Ethereum and you purchased it a couple months ago, I'd be, I I would just hold Ethereum for now. You just hold it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be like, Sean, when should I set my sell? Like, and, and, and you're not, I mean, you're not, um, you know, with the, with the stock market, the people have to get licensed, right? I mean, there's, there's certain, I mean, this is, this is all uncharted territory because as you said, you've, you're just self-taught. Um, you know, there, there aren't any licenses one can get in order to like um, ask, you know, you know, to, to manage this for other people and so forth. So it's just still, again, my, my brain is so, so rattled as to like, once you start investing in Bitcoin, you start watching the price and you start understanding what it's doing and why it's doing the price structure. Mm-hmm. You know, we're coming off of a massive dump uh, from that Elon Musk tweet. Uh, so, you know, I went in and bought the dip. A lot of my friends and family, we went in and bought the dip. You know, we were buying at 49000 47000 you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know. So his voice really matters a lot in all these cryptocurrencies because is he, he, you know, oh, his voice yes. very a lot. Yeah. Elon Musk sneezes and Dogecoin goes up, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you're saying like if Facebook comes out with one, which I think that what they do, they were going to call it Libra, and I think they might, I think you might have thought about changing the name or something like that. You're saying like it should be. Yeah, it was originally Libra. I forget what the, the new name changes. Uh, it was just recent, the past couple of days, or maybe even today, that I just noticed they're thinking about changing the name. Yeah, but. Uh, I don't I don't know if they're going to come out with a coin. It kind of makes sense for them, uh, but it's a scary proposition with, with them having so much control already. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. And they keep, I mean, the funny part about it, I remember when, uh, when Zuckerberg came out with saying, like, I want this frictionless sharing. <laughs> Uh, and he wanted everyone to share everything, you know, and, and I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm a little on the, you know, I'm a little long in the tooth to sort of be like, I want to share everything with everyone at all. I mean, I'm a chatty girl, you know that. Um, but I was just like, mm, do I want to share that much information about myself? And now we realize he's been mi- like data mining all of that stuff. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, so David Blackmore is asking, what is the lowest you would start your investment? 
currently, right now, uh, uh, it's an amazing time to buy. Fifty thousand uh, dollars, you know, it's a perfect time to buy. Fifty thousand. Oh, you're saying that's how much it is. So I was going to be like, you want people to invest with you? I don't have fifty. Is it asking how much he should invest or, or what price he should start jumping yeah, in? Yeah, what's the lowest you start? Like what? Oh, oh, you start? Oh, I, I have a friend who, who started with two hundred dollars. Right. And he. Yeah, he, I started with hundred. Yeah, he put in two hundred. He put in a hundred. He put in three hundred. Uh, he currently uh, stores his money over on BlockFi, so he makes you know five percent interest on his money. Mm -hmm. When you start getting large amounts of money, that five percent really adds up really quick, and BlockFi pays you out in Bitcoin. So if they pay you five dollars in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you know, what's what's that going to be worth in five years? You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I think you can you can invest. A, a Vimeo uh, is taking uh, uh, Bitcoin orders now, so I think you can invest as little as ten dollars. Mm. It doesn't yeah. take much. Yeah, it's literally you can invest a cup of coffee, basically. Well, yeah, the one that one account that I set I, I was I set up today, the Bitbuy, it, it was a minimum of a hundred dollars yeah. to get started. So, yeah. Every company is going to be a little different. Uh, I gave my, uh, when I first started doing Bitcoin, I gave my daughter uh, $20 in Bitcoin mm -hmm. just, just to see if it would spark some interest in her. Right. And currently, you know, that Bitcoin is worth, you know, $400. Like it's, right. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take a whole lot, you know, uh, it, it's consistent buying. Right. So a lot of people have been calling me over the past day asking, you know, should I buy? And yeah, $50,000 is a great buy right now. So, so people should be investing now. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Right now putting my, don't go all in right now, but you know, start cost averaging your way in. If you're if you're planning on putting, you know, a thousand dollars into the market, you know, start with a hundred dollar buy, start with a two hundred dollar buy. Okay. Okay. And so like you've given me a couple of different um channels there and, and David Blackmore is asking, is is Coinbase a good platform? But you've you've given me both the, the um the bitbuy.ca and BlockFi. I guess that, that the bitbuy.ca is for Canadians. And BlockFi, but they seem to be doing both of the both of the same. Are they are they the same? Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of set in my ways. So I can't speak too much for Coinbase. I, I know Coinbase. Right. I don't I don't use Coinbase. I've I've developed a trusted relationship with Bitbuy. Uh, you know, there's other companies coming out. They might be cheaper, but you know, uh, it's all about who you trust. So okay, because yeah. yeah, I mean, you're giving your money out to something that you're like, I don't know who these people are. I don't know if they're just gonna. It's a scam, right? Because that that can happen. I found uh, Bitbuy to be very straightforward and easy because I walked a lot of people through purchasing on Bitbuy, uh -huh. and it's very easy, you know. Uh, so once you have a Bitbuy account, if somebody uses your referral code, you both get twenty dollars, so you, you get a little bit kickback every now and again, right? For a Bitbuy, okay. and then BlockFi is the exact same thing. Exact same thing. So okay. no, so BlockFi, BlockFi, you're not purchasing Bitcoin on there. BlockFi, you, you can you can do very simple trades. So you okay. can trade four different cryptocurrencies on there. So you can exchange your Bitcoin for Chainlink with a click of a button. You can't purchase Bitcoin on BlockFi. So okay. block. Uh, You're so, gonna have to walk me through this when we're not on camera. Yeah. I'm like I'm so lost. BlockFi. Think of BlockFi like your savings account. So think about it as your bank. So you're okay. putting your Bitcoin on there. You're earning interest. If you want to jump out of your Bitcoin position and go into Tether or go into Chainlink, you can do that very easily. Okay. So, so if I have my Oh, one more thing I wanted to point out is BlockFi yeah. will, uh, you, once you put Bitcoin on BlockFi, you're pre-approved for a loan. So they'll loan you money at 5.9% interest and you're pre-approved because you're loaning it against your Bitcoin. So if you ever, uh, let's say you have $5,000 in Bitcoin and you fall on hard times, well, the last thing you want to do is sell your Bitcoin. Hmm. So a better option may be to borrow against your Bitcoin. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, you're gonna have to walk me through. We're gonna have to have another session to talk about this stuff too, because even David Blackmore is like, "Is there a way to get a referral and a connection to you?" <laughs> so, how can people reach you if they if they want to reach and, and ask you about more more uh, more information about this? Uh, so, uh, my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I believe I'm, I believe they can click on my LinkedIn profile here. Can they? I I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but you're Sean Vlad. So S E A N L A. Yeah, my email is seanvlad at gmail.com. So it's just my name at gmail.com. And I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on YouTube. So. Right. And so do you, can, like, can, can people contact you? Like, are you going to charge like a service to help people walk through this? Have you thought about doing anything like that or te like teaching people about how to? How to we, usually I do a lot of it pro bono, you know, just, just helping people out. You know, if they use my referral links, usually I get a few bucks kicked back anyway. So, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah. I, I like talking about the technology and I like helping people do the technology. Um, I've explained a little bit more about mining and setting up mining rigs on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Which, which is uh, called again, I did look at your videos. What was the name of your your YouTube channel? Jesus. Hang on, I gotta look it up again. You, I know you have a YouTube channel and you, and you walked through a bunch of different things on there, including like setting up your uh, your home theater system and um, and some other things as well. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Boot Logic. So B O T L O G I C. Okay, B O T L O G I C for your YouTube channel. Yeah, it's Boot Logic. I go over some of the uh, uh, setting up an ant miner S nine and mining Bitcoin. Uh, the video is a, a couple months old because I was uh, I was recommending that people spend you know one hundred and fifty dollars on their miner and the miners cost a lot more now. So you have to understand if you're investing and you want to mine uh, during a a bull market, miners are going to cost a lot more. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So the technology it's, it's harder to get at it now that people are sort of there's just there's more buzz happening about it. So I think people that's why I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about this. Like, well, I was, selling, I was selling miners a couple months ago and uh, we were selling them for fairly cheap. And, uh, uh, you know, as the as the bull market took off, uh, so the prices. So, you know, uh, purchasing a miner right now would not be a good idea because you're not going to get them at retail. So if you were interested in mining, purchasing the miners during the bear market when no one's paying attention to Bitcoin, that's a good time to purchase them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because I, I still haven't got it wrapped around my head, so we might have to like circle back and have another. Yeah, most people don't get it on their um, on their very first try. Right. You have to kind of think as of uh, blockchain as it, it's essentially just a public ledger. When you're purchasing uh, Bitcoin, you're not actually getting handed over the Bitcoin. What you're doing is you're getting handed a key that unlocks the Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin always stays on the ledger. So that way the books always balance. The, nothing ever leaves the ledger. You're mm -hmm. just getting, when you purchase Bitcoin, you're just getting a key to access that part, to change that information. So when you under, when you wrap your head around that, you'll understand that the books always balance. There's never any money missing because no Bitcoin ever leaves the ledger. So you might want to think about it like a bank vault, right? So you know the, 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 um, the, the mini vaults that you purchase where you put your key in and you turn it and you take your stuff out? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. Bitcoin, like um, a million of those, okay? And the Bitcoin can never leave the bank vault. All you get is the key to, to open it and to look at it, but you can never take it out of the bank. Okay, I still don't. <laughs> it's still on my head. But what I do want to pivot the conversation because we only got about 10 minutes left because I want to talk a little bit about NFTs because this is also something. And so, so the NFTs, probably have nothing to do with the cryptocurrencies but is that right do they have nothing well, to do with each other we're all in the same space so uh ethereum will support nfts cordano is going to support nfts so they are in the cryptocurrency space they're, okay. they're they're not two separate entities they're they're co they coexist so an nft is a non-fungible token uh so it's a way of i'm gonna try i'm gonna try my best here it's a way of proving ownership. So you can you can create, let's say, a, a JPEG and you put it on the blockchain. The blockchain is going to be secured by the same technology that Bitcoin secures its network. So Bitcoin has the most secure network we've ever seen. Uh, so you have a way of proving ownership. So if you create something and you put it on the blockchain, it's registered to you. So 20 years down the line, you can refer back to the blockchain and we can refer to ownership. It's it's very exciting because for the first time we can actually uh, prove ownership of digital content. So if you were to create an MP3 and you were to pass that around, how do you prove that it's your MP3 or you were the one that created it or you were the first one who minted it? Uh, NFTs allow you to do that. So they allow you to, um, to uh, rent out the ownership, to pass the ownership, they also allow you to make passive income. So if you created a picture and I license the picture to you and you license the picture to someone else, I we all get a kickback from that. We all we all earn money. So I was listening to a Clubhouse chat about NFTs yesterday, and it was this hybrid conversation about athletes and artists. Mm -hmm. And so the artists, obviously, so if, if I get this right, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
if I create an art piece, if I'm an artist and I create an art piece and I sell it, I sell the NFT for it. In essence, anytime anybody uses it, it's kind of like, um, kind of like a copyright of sorts that basically, yeah. It's proof of ownership and whoever owns the NFT owns the art piece. Right. So you, you might lend out the ownership, rent it out for somebody to show your art piece or you might outright sell the NFT. Selling the NFT, the way the blockchain works is that when the person you sold it to sells it, you'll get a kickback. Mm -hmm. so, this so let's just say today, like there's, um, you know, for just for giggles, um, like I've heard that there's, let's just say Tom Brady, you know, cause he's got a big name out there. And he's, he's I think he's gonna be dabbling in this space in, in the next little while, if he hasn't already, he's coming up with some kind of business that has to do with M NFTs. So let's just say I want to get in an early adopt and I want to buy, you know, um, you know, Tom Brady throwing the last touchdown for whatever Super Bowl. I'm not into sports, but let's just say I, I, I and I and he's selling it and I want to buy it. Like, is that going to is that what's going to happen is like that moment is kind of mine if I want to buy it. Yeah, I don't know if you can log a moment in time. I've seen people selling their tweets online, you yeah. know, their very first tweets. Uh, do you own that tweet? Uh, you're not you own it like it's yours and you can prove you own it but you can't take it off twitter you know what i mean right it's intellectual capital is kind of what you're saying whether that capital is like your image or whatever so it's kind of like if if like and i think musicians this might be beneficial for musicians because if a musician puts their song out there and then i want to use it as an intro or i want to use and so is it is that how it's going to work is it going to help going to help artists we're, we're still feeling out the space and we're still trying to yeah. figure out how this technology is going to be used would i invest in this space right now no no okay i see people spending 60 million dollars on a jpeg that scares yeah. me. it's a little ridiculous yeah that scares me. let the technology let the technology mature and settle down and then uh look at investing but as of right now i would stay away from the nft space i wouldn't okay that. Because it does seem a little weird. Like, like, why would I buy Nyan Cat or like, you know, like I've seen the Nyan Cat and um, and Jack, Jack Dorsey's first tweet, and 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 you know, Paris Hilton is talking about her her uh, fiance is involved in NFTs. So there's a lot of buzz happening about the sort of Paris Hilton saying that she's been in it forever, and it's, it, it, it's going to serve an amazing purpose when it matures. I, I foresee a day when people may sell their houses as NFTs, and I believe that's already happened. Uh, so you can, yeah, so they turn their house into an NFT and then people can buy portions of it and they'll get kickbacks on the rent. And yeah, it's just proof of ownership. And, you know, it's just a way of transferring ownership to one person to another, and it's completely secure. And you can add smart contracts on the NFTs. So smart contracts might say something like, uh, you purchased my house for X amount of dollars and the smart contract may dictate that, you know, if Bitcoin hits a certain price, the NFT is going to revert back to the original owner. You know, you could smart contracts just put an if this, if this and uh, that statement into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can, I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm trying to wrap my head around Sean, because I mean, and I'm sure that people are feeling the same way is that I didn't, I couldn't get my head wrapped around how the internet was going to work. Yes. And the, you know, in, in back when I joined in sort of 90, 96, 97, it was sort of like, how does this going to work? Like people put up images on the computer and the computer talks to another computer. And so I think that's where, you know, some of us, because it's just uncharted territory that it's hurting, it's definitely hurting my brain um, to sort of like figure out how to sort of navigate around all of this. But I, you know. One, one analogy I like for Bitcoin is it is the most secure network on earth. It's, uh, it's unhackable currently. Uh, to hack the Bitcoin network, you'd have to control 51% of the hash power. So, I mean, it would cost you, you know, $500 billion to acquire that much hash power. To, to You'd be better off just mining Bitcoin. It pays to play by the rules. Mm. It doesn't pay to attack the network. So Bitcoin being the most secure network in the world, we we uh, I like the example that uh, it's like having the most secure air hanger in a world in the world, and all we're putting in is a tricycle. It can hold so much value. It can hold trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of value, and it's a secure network that can never be hacked, and that's always being updated and checked. So uh, it, it looks bright for Bitcoin in the future. Yeah, as I said, I keep hearing these things that this is the, the year for it, which is why I think so many people are paying attention. But I, there's still a lot of naysayers out there, too, that are going to say, like, 
it's just air. You're buying nothing. There's nothing behind it. You know, like okay, you know, right now the naysayers are going on about the electric electricity concerns. And you know, a couple of years ago it was the, uh, the people doing illicit purposes with Bitcoin. It seems like they always want to find something, and that's fine. Everyone's has, and and that's what I like about the world is that we can invent new technologies and people will scrutinize it. Uh, but before people scrutinize it, they really need to go and, uh, and and check out some of the sites and check out the electricity uses. I mean, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Bitcoin only uses 127 terawatt hours of electricity. You know, a lot of things, which is equivalent to Argentina or something, the electrical. You know, a lot of things use as much power as a country. Christmas lights do. You know, uh, video games. You know, we don't we don't complain about video games using too much power. We don't complain about Christmas lights using too much power. Uh, the fact of the matter is we have excess power. When power is created, we can store it in a battery or or we can use it. Other than that, it's gone. It, it just, you know, it, 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 you can't, uh, storing it in a battery is very expensive. So yeah. we create a lot more electricity than we use. The whole purpose of uh, Bitcoin mining is they're they're going after that cheap electricity. They're going after that electricity we don't use, so, right. and their profits are dictated by that electricity. And if they're using coal or they're using an inefficient system, they're not going to make money. So, when people, this argument's going to come up for the next year. I know it will, and uh, I urge people just to go on and look look at the statistics and look at. What else uses 127 terawatts? You know, there's lots of things out there that use that. Uh, you know, Elon Musk. I, I mean, how uh, how um, how much electricity does he use to create a battery? You know, how much damage does he do to the environment creating these batteries for his Teslas? Mm -hmm. uh, we all create waste, but to me, Bitcoin is worth it. Uh, we uh, uh, you know we have to pay uh, in electricity to store uh, our money safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do know, and I, you know, we have, we're going to wrap up soon, but I, I do know, like, that uh, I've heard that banks are actually just exploring this kind of technology. Um, they're not quite there yet, but there, there, there are certainly some discussions about it anyway. So well, they, they announced in the United States that hundreds of banks are going to be supporting crypto. So <laughs> people like your mother and father, they won't need someone like me to walk them through it. They can just walk in and open a Bitcoin savings account. It, it's mm. going to be fantastic in the future. It's going to get easier. And I'm sure the bank will take custody of their Bitcoin so they don't have to worry about losing their wallet, you know, losing their keys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's still, there's still a lot to discuss anyway. Um, but we're, we're close to the hour. So uh, yeah. I definitely, you know, we'll, we'll circle back. We'll set another date to, to chat about this stuff and see if there's any other questions that anybody else has about this stuff. Cause as I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm sure I'll, come, I'll sure I'll come up with more facts and figures for our next one. Uh, my first time being on live stream with you, so uh, I need to fill you out first, but I'm sure our next conversation will be a little more in-depth, and hopefully I can wrap your head around uh, blockchain technology. Well, yeah, as I said, you know, because this is uncharted territory, it's sort of, it's like kind of trying to explain, I'm sure for you, it's probably trying to explain electricity to somebody who's like, wait, what? You just turn the light on and there's like all of a sudden, and where does that come from? Is it the air? Like, so, you know, this, this whole thing, trying to explain it when you understand the concept, because your background is computers, you've been doing, you've been involved in the computer industry for well over 20 years. And programming. So it was a good fit for me and it was easy for me to, to understand the technology. Mm -hmm. when, I you, when I saw the technology and, and I understood it, uh, I realized how life changing this will be for the world, for the financial system. And I urge, I urge everybody, don't blow all your money, but put something in, hedge something, uh, you know, because there's only so much that can go around. And uh, we have companies coming in buying billions of dollars at a time. And mm -hmm. there's only so much Bitcoin that will go around. We don't want the companies controlling all the Bitcoin. We want Bitcoin in the hands of the uh, average Joe. We want people to own Bitcoin and to be able to hold it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you think that'll eat like um, this will help? You know, like, cause anyway, it's a whole other conversation. But um, you know, the rich are like the one percenters. Uh, are you know, are they dabbling in this, or is it, or is this helping sort of level yeah. the level yeah. the playing field for the regular regular folk to to put it in perspective? If every millionaire in the world went to buy Bitcoin, they would only end up with like 002 percent of Bitcoin or something. There's just not enough to go around. Mm -hmm. So the average Joe, uh, as I said, 
right now, 10% of a Bitcoin is is something I would hold for the future. And, you know, even if you don't like Bitcoin, uh, why not put a little bit of money in and just hedge, you know, just in case. Uh, a night out for dinner, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, if you can afford if you can afford a couple hundred dollars, you know, because uh, if you had put a couple hundred dollars in at the start, you would have got Bitcoin for, you know, a penny, right? Yeah. And I, I'm assuming that I'm hoping, uh, I think Bitcoin one day will, will, will breach a million dollars. And I think one, once Bitcoin uh, hits a million dollars, $10 million is inevitable. Mm -hmm. And in five years, I see companies, I foresee companies fighting over half a Bitcoin. You know, they will fight tooth and nail to get their hands on that Bitcoin. Hmm. You know, Bitcoin specifically, not some of these other ones that we've yeah, talked about. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Sean. So if people want to get in touch with you, it's seanvlad at gmail.com. So, right, it's S-E-A-N-V-L-A-D at gmail.com. Yes. If anybody has any questions about you, and we're working on your LinkedIn profile as we speak, so sure. that'll be up and running in the next little while. So, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me, Sean. And um, it's an enlightened me a little bit. And maybe next time my 14-year-old will join us because I know he's – He's definitely interested in this too, but I think he was a little. I, I do. I do encourage people to to um, to you know if they if their if their children is interested in mining, you know, let them do it. It's yeah. really not going to hurt anything, and it may may get them interested in the financial institutions. It may get them interested in uh, saving money and you know, and the technology itself. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sean. Well, thank you again so much, and um, and we'll talk to you very soon. And now I, I, I was going to say I don't know how to end the stream and end the, the thing, but there's a little button here that tells me to end the stream. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.